this episode, I want to talk about one of my all-time favorite games, Final Fantasy XI. I remember seeing a commercial for this game back in 2004, and I had played Final Fantasy IX on the PlayStation, so I, I knew what Final Fantasy was, and I loved that game. So when I saw this commercial and saw that they were making an online Final Fantasy that you could play with other people, my mind was just blown imagining playing a fantasy game like that and, and cooperating with other players. And I had never played an online game before, so I was just, I had to have it. I, I begged my parents for it, and they got it for me that Christmas. So I, I remember waking up Christmas Day and putting all the discs in the computer and installing the game and struggling to get through play online and create my account and patch the game. I don't think I had the game patched and ready to go till the next day, but when I did finally get in, I made my character, which was a Hume Thief, and I started in the city of Windurst. And when the game dropped you in, there was no tutorial, there were no pop-ups or direction, nothing telling you what to do or where to go. And honestly, I think that's kind of what made the game great is just the sense of wonder and mystery and having to piece things together and talk to other players to figure things out. The game wasn't just holding your hand and, and taking you everywhere you needed to go. You, you had to figure it out for yourself. So I just want to talk about a lot of those aspects of the game that were really unique and that I think made it a kind of game that you don't really see anymore. Final Fantasy XI truly was a massively multiplayer online game. You had to play with other players. You had to talk to other players. A lot of modern MMOs, you know, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, they honestly feel like single player games to me. I can just play them by myself and the game tells me what to do and where to go and there's you know, I don't, I don't mean to disparage those games, they can be fun, they just don't provide the same kind of satisfaction and gameplay that Final Fantasy XI did. Final Fantasy XI rewarded you for cooperating with other players and achieving, you know, milestones. Things like unlocking your sub-job and unlocking advanced jobs and getting to Juno for the first time, getting your chocobo license so you could rent a chocobo and get around the world faster. Uh, unlocking airship passes so you could go to new places and doing level break quests so you could get past a certain level cap. And because the game didn't hold your hand, you know, it never tells you, oh, it's time to go get the sub job, it's time to get the chocobo license, it's time to get the airship pass. You just had to find these things. If you didn't find them, then you wouldn't get them. So that's what really facilitated the player communication. You know, there weren't a bunch of online databases at this time, like with modern games, where you just look up, oh, I'm on this quest, let me just type it into the search field and it'll tell me exactly what to do. In fact, if you didn't use third-party software, you couldn't even window out of the game. So there was a real reward to achieving anything in the game. Even travel. Travel was dangerous. It was time-consuming. It was risky. Uh, you'll notice in this video, I'm doing a lot of running. I haven't played the game in a decade, so I made a new account. And I'm doing the run to Juno, which is the the hub city that everyone would go to. Whether you started in Bastok or Sandoria or Windurst, everyone ended up in Juno. It's where you would get your Chocobo license. It's where all the main auction houses were. People would be selling things. They would be crafting, forming groups. And running to Juno at low level with no chocobo takes about an hour. And if you die, you get sent back to your home point, which was probably in the city you started in if you never changed it on the way. Uh, so you had to be really careful not to get aggro and die. You, you run through some zones with higher level enemies that would just kill you in one hit. And they could aggro you by sight, somewhat aggro by the sound of your footsteps, if you cast a spell or if you had low health. Uh, there were all different ways that enemies could aggro you, which was another cool mechanic in the game that you don't, you don't really see in modern MMOs. Even at the level cap, there were still zones that would be dangerous, high-level zones where you could die. 
and dying in this game had serious consequences. You could lose XP, you could level down. Uh, you're losing time because you have to travel back to where you were, so it really made the zones feel meaningful, like there was a risk versus reward to going to places. I remember there was a notorious monster I used to camp in a high-level temple in Yotor jungle. The, I believe his name was Sozu Rogberry, and he could drop an item called the Thief's Knife, which gave a bonus to the treasure hunter trait that thieves had. And thieves were not a sought-after job in raids and boss fights because they just didn't do a lot of damage, but they would often get subbed in at the end of a boss because Treasure Hunter would increase the chance for loot to drop. And the game had a lot of really cool gear like that. Gear with unique traits that would keep it relevant. It's not like every patch would come out and invalidate all of your gear. You would have multiple gear sets for different situations. A Black Mage might have a full gear set just for casting a Thunder Spell. Thieves would have a full gear set for increasing the chance of their steal ability to steal items from enemies. Most of the melee jobs would have a full set of accuracy gear so they wouldn't miss weapon skills. Uh, the combat in the game was very strategic and slow paced so if you missed a weapon skill it was a big deal. It would really slow the group down. The last thing I wanted to mention was just the overall atmosphere of the game. The storytelling, the graphics, the art, the themes, the soundtrack especially. I can still listen to music from that soundtrack today and it just, it takes me back to the game. Because of the way MMOs have evolved, I doubt we'll ever see a game like this again. It was a really unique, once in a lifetime experience. Even though there are still official Final Fantasy XI servers, the formula has changed so drastically over the years that it really represents a modern MMO more than the experience I've described in this video. It's been fun reminiscing on one of my favorite gaming experiences of all time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.